Hello, everyone. I see a lot of familiar faces out there. I'm Carrie, and I want to talk to you about gender. And I'm going to talk to you about two main points, the way gender can affect both your research outcome, your research methodology, and your personal safety. So sometimes we just think of gender as something women need to worry about, um, and that's not true either. I want to talk, address concerns for both males and females who are doing research abroad in both the context of research and safety. So let's start with research. I was working with a great Stanford student a few years ago, environmental, in, environmental engineering major, and she was going to northern India to do some research on cooking stoves. And um, essentially what she wanted to try to do was help to create a new kind of cooking stove that wasn't using burning fossil fuels at coals, actually, that women were inhaling in the home. It was a great project. Long story short, you know, she rode ahead. She had set up interviews in a village. It was going to be very simple. She was going to go to women's houses during the day because there was some concern in North India about women traveling at night. So she was going to visit their homes during the day while they were cooking and talk to them and get data for her information, you know, for her project. And when she got there, she discovered, in fact, that if the topic strayed from the actual concept of cooking, recipes or what they were cooking, what ingredients they were using, and went into, into um, how, they, how they gathered their coal, energy use, electricity, anything like that, that many of these women did not have permission from their husbands to speak to her about those issues. Those issues were considered the purview of men in the home. And she didn't realize this until the first day on the ground doing her research. And so imagine how everything sort of turned upside down when she realized actually she was going to have to come back at night and speak to the women in the presence of their husband, get their permission, or the husbands would have to address certain issues and the w wives could address other issues, and it presented a complication. How would she get to the homes, home from one home to another home at night? Again, because of the issue of traveling alone as a woman, and she was traveling alone. So she had to find someone to travel with her, which was she was able to hire an interpreter who was from the local university, who was going to be her research aide. But then there were also questions about the fact whether she should have that assistant should be male or female. So in the end, it was determined that it would be safest for her to be traveling with a male. But then there were assumptions made about what it meant that she was traveling at night in a, in a taxi and from home to home with a male. It was, it was sort of a hard workaround. It really impacted her research. Uh, it all worked out. Um, but these are things to think about. Um, so women uh, traveling in some countries sometimes think, so we all think about how we should dress. And you should familiarize yourself with, some, with the country you're going to. I'll just throw out some questions. You should ask yourself, what is the attitude towards gender in your host country? What are, the considered, what are considered typical gender roles in your host society? What are the society's perceptions and expectations for, for men, for women, and for transgender individuals in the country you're traveling to? Um, and this was mentioned earlier. What are the stereotypes of not just Americans, but American women and American men, specifically. Um, anyone want to guess what the most popular TV show, American TV show was worldwide when I was doing my graduate research traveling abroad? And, and that is where everyone's perceptions of, of who Americans are, or what American women and men were like, um, were from this show. Any takers? Yes, Baywatch, 100 points right there. So I was just shocked when I, everybody, and I hadn't really watched you know, Baywatch, I hadn't seen the show, and everyone was asking me about the main characters and if I lived near a beach and if I had a red car and just these perceptions that, whatever it is on Baywatch, they're lifeguards and you know, again, the perception that particularly men have a lot of money or women might be loose, and there are these perceptions and so you have to think about how people are viewing you and that they get their information from certain kinds of shows. So ask yourself right now, I actually tried to figure that out before I came here, but I wasn't able to determine what the most popular American television show is being viewed right now abroad. But try to find out what those, 
shows are, so you can be familiar with that. Um, and, you know, lastly, when you're talking about gender roles, ask yourself who holds more power in what domain, men or women, and so that you have a sense of how that might affect the kinds of questions you're asking um, in your research methodology and in your personal interactions. Um, okay, so those are the questions you want to ask yourself. Back to how gender might influence your, your research. Um, and then we'll talk about safety. So oftentimes women will think, well, it's really important for me to dress appropriately when I'm in the presence of other men. So I should, if I'm in a country where um, women wear long sleeves, I should think of doing the same, or long pants, I should think of doing the same, only when I'm in the presence of men. So if I'm going to a home and I'm gonna be interviewing women and I'm gonna be sitting around with them, it doesn't quite matter how I dress or how I look. But one thing you may not realize is that women may be punished by their own family, by their male relatives, they're either their fathers or their husbands, for having spent time with you if you look inappropriate. So in other words, there might be an assumption that you're, you're teaching them something um, by dressing a certain way or talking a certain way that they shouldn't be learning. So it's just as important to think about um, if modesty is an issue, thinking about modesty, if you are a woman working with women, um, as, as it would be if you are a woman interacting with men. Um, also, we think about um, how, I'm sure you've worked with your mentor as you're developing your proposal and you've thought about whether you are interviewing or interacting with males and or females and how that's going to influence your research. But in some situations, it just, you won't be able to get the information you really want to get because people just may not feel comfortable in a mixed gendered situation. So if that's something you've thought of, you might be able to hire a research assistant from a local university. If you're female and, and you need to interview some males about you know, certain behaviors, certain actions, you can have the male research assistant interview the males, um, vice versa. If you're a male researcher and you need to interview women, you could try to hire a local researcher from um, local university there. That's always a good way to go. Um, so we talked a little bit about um, how gender can influence your research. Now I want to talk a little bit about how gender might influence your safety. So one thing to ask yourself um, is what's at stake in the country where you're traveling with the people you're working around? In the, in the neighborhoods you're in. In other words, maybe when someone in your environment at Stanford is considering committing a crime, there's a lot at stake. Their reputation, their, the possibility they'll be um, ex expelled from the university, uh, they'll have a record and may not be able to get a job that they want to get. So imagine if you're doing research in a, in a slum where no one is employed, no one has a record of any sort, there's a lot of bribery, there's very little at stake. So there's potentially um, increased possibility of sorts of crimes that you wouldn't think uh, you, wouldn't think you might encounter. Um, or you wouldn't think, you know, in the middle of the day, if you're traveling, you're even traveling with a partner, you're safe. So I'm gonna share a story that's a bit scary, but there, was a woman, this was also um, a situation in India. I had done research in Hyderabad and sort of central India. Um, this is a story that took place in North India of a young woman who was doing research and she was looking for, she was scouting an area for a photography shoot and she was near a slum in an area with ruins and she had a male, a local male um, guide with her in the middle of the day and she had been asking people for some directions to an area that she knew existed, but she wasn't exactly sure how to get there. And through texting and quick telephone messages of sort of one, for lack of a better word, I'll call them gang members, you know, one gang member to another sort of gang member. By the time she got to where she was trying to get to, 20 minutes away down a long road, there were, I think, five or six people waiting there for her, and she was 
attacked and raped and her male partner was just you know tied and held in the middle of the afternoon. And there was so little at stake for the people who committed this crime. It actually was a nationally reported crime ultimately, but there was so little at stake for them and sometimes going to prison might be better than starving on the street and living on the street. And so what she was operating with an assumption in the middle of the day, no, you know, we kind of assumptions we have, someone wouldn't just attack us in the middle of the day, but people might be watching out for each other to help each other commit crimes, oddly enough. Um, so that is a story that I wanted to share with you about being very, very careful, asking yourself, you know, what's at stake for the people around me? So we've talked about women who are, I heard earlier talking about cat calls, you know, it's good not to make eye contact because in some cultures, returning the eye contact could be an invitation. Um, so you should be sort of aware of that. But I also want to talk about the gaze for men. So you're a guy, you're traveling in another country, and you know, familiarize yourself with the gender norms of that country. If you hold your gaze for an uncomfortable amount of time for that country's standards on a young woman, that woman could very well be punished or if you approach her and talk to her um, for, for just talking to you or interacting with you, particularly in very strict Muslim countries where women you know, are veiled and aren't supposed to um, be looked at. That's why they are covered. And so you could, when, I, when earlier I was saying we're talking about how gender could affect your safety or the safety of others, your potential interaction with someone could result in her punishment um, or, you know, potentially being beaten by her husband or her brothers or her fathers for simply being looked at. So think about how your interactions, both male and female researchers in this room, um, can, be, can affect the safety of others, not just of yourself. Um, and I also just wanted you to think a little bit about how different kind of gendered relationships are, are received in different countries. So how do, how, what is the rule? Is there a rule or a law in the country you're visiting about same-sex relationships? Could you potentially be arrested for walking down the street hand in hand or in a romantic fashion with someone of your same gender? And the answer to that question is yes, in some countries that is the case. So. In situations like these, what you need to do is prioritize your personal safety over your, you know, your beliefs and equality or whatever it might be, your belief for self-expression. Um, those hold true while you're here, but when you're in other countries, you simply won't have the kinds of protections or safety or rights that you have in the US or in most of Western Europe. So think about that if you're traveling outside of Western Europe. 